Macau SOS. SOS stands for S sacrifice, O offerings, S service. We were praying, my wife and I, and we were looking for something to follow the will of God through the whole year and to help you. So it's not, it's not just, listen, a series of teachings. It's more than that. We will have this campaign through the whole year because one thing we need to understand, my friends, is that we are saved to serve. I'm going to say it again for the cheap seats in the back. We are saved to serve. Amen? Today I want to focus our attention on the word as service. I know I haven't talked much about sacrifice and offerings, but I believe today, since we're going to get out there, Let's talk about service. We heard much, much, much about this word service. But today I want to talk to you about how we are saved to serve, like I mentioned a few minutes ago. Listen, one of the signs of a person that is saved is that almost right away, that person wants to serve. That's a sign of somebody that is truly saved. Because somehow that person feels the love of God and it feels the gratitude to do something about it. It's like the pursuing of the worldly things has no longer meaning and a new passion to serve appears right away. You can tell that somebody is truly saved when they right away say, hey, can I help? Can I get involved? Can I do something? If a person says that he's saved, Listen to me. And their lives are not dedicated to serve others. I will question pretty much their salvation. And if you're coming from a background that you don't believe in this, let me tell you, your roots of, as a Christian are not right. Because you need to get this in one point. God, Jesus himself, he didn't came to this earth to be served, but to serve the people. How many of you understand what I'm saying right now? So, because you see, our Savior came to show us the way to the Father. So, serving is a, pretty much an important part of what we're supposed to do as Christians. He came to humble himself to serve those in need. My friends, another thing that we can take from SOS. Obviously, it talks about, you know, when somebody, they use it when they're going through a problem. They need to be rescued. They, 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 they need help. And like I said in the beginning of the service, how many believe that this world needs a lot of help? Right? So that's why this campaign SOS. Now, SOS, also something that, this is what I want to talk to you today. It's, it's something that can help us to understand this. We are saved to offer O our lives as in service to or for others to come to Christ. We are saved so we can offer our lives serving others so others can come to Christ. We are saved with a purpose. We are saved to love God, but some of you misunderstand the important part of not only love God, but the best way to love God is serving Him. Are you with me? It's the best way. Now, I'm going to talk to you from a chapter in the Bible that probably you heard this before, but we're going to break the whole chapter. And obviously, I can stand here and teach to you for weeks about this, but I'm not going to do that. But I do definitely want to go through this, especially like today that we're going to get out there. But also as we start this new year, we've been praying, we've been fasting, and we've been asking God, give us the direction for this year. Well, what is that? Okay, let's talk about it right now. Romans 12, 1, 2, then 4, all the way through 21. But let's start right now with Romans 12, 1 and 2. Therefore, this is Paul talking to the Romans, to the new believers, to the people that want to, do what is right. How many of you want to do what is right now that you're in Christ? Okay, three people. Let me ask you again. Raise your hand. How many of you want to do what is right and now you're in Christ? Amen? So look at what it says. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to, number one, offer your bodies as a living sacrifice. 
Paul says very clear, you must offer your bodies as a living sacrifice. Clear. Holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Somehow they have teach us that we come to church to worship God. We get out of church and then that's it. No, you can worship God by serving God out of this church. What are you saying, Pastor? That I come here and the same feeling that I have as I sing to God, that, 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 that thing that goes in my inside can continue as I get out of here singing God? Yes, but not only that, you don't even have to sing. You can serve God with your personal life and that will become a living sacrifice. You have to understand, listen, that it says present your bodies, not your minds. It has, look, okay, get in this. It doesn't say get your minds, your thoughts. It says your bodies. That means your hands. That means your feet. That's why we heard so many times that God has no hands but ours. God chose to communicate his gospel through humans like you and me. Amen? And it says, precious are the feet, the feet of those that take the good news to those that have none. So it talks about using and involving our physical. Well, I'm here to tell you that you're going to understand something this year. We're going to get busy offering our bodies so others can come to Christ. And you say, what? what what's that? What's that? Okay, don't get crazy. We're not going to do like a little fire thing and then we're going to throw people there. Okay, when you hear a sacrifice like, do, do, do. no, we're not going to do that. What we're going to do is that we're going to use our strengths so other people can come to Christ like once we came to Christ. Can you give a hand clap to God? Come on, you better give a hand clap to God. Amen? We're going to use our strengths. Like tonight, we're going to get out there. We're going to talk to the people. Listen, it takes effort. Some of you guys are going to come and we're going to have a great time. Some other ones are going to be in home and you're going to be in front of the TV. God bless you. But it's going to take some effort to get out there today and to communicate Christ. How many know what I'm talking about? And that's a little way that we can serve other people. You say, why, Pastor? Why, Pastor? Why you want that we come today at 5 p.m. after three? Why? It's Sunday. You want to know why? How many of the people out there need to hear about Jesus? Okay. How many? Okay, I'm going to say it again. How many believe that people out there need to hear about Jesus? Yes or no? Unless we communicate this, people are not going to hear this. We can be the greatest ministry in the world, but if we don't keep communicating, we're going to miss some people out there. We got to get busy, my friends, and we got to get this in our mind. Only because the house is strong. The what? The house is strong. Only because of that, my friends, we can do what we can do around the world. It's something you got to get into your mind. And this year, my prayer is that you present your body as a living sacrifice. It says, listen to God. This is your true, proper, your true and proper worship. Some people is always thinking that I'm really worshiping God properly. That I'm singing, that I'm lifting my arms, that I do the move, you know, when they, oh yeah, oh yeah. Don't be too worried about that when it comes to worship. You want to know what's the best worship? Anybody? You want to know what's the best worship you can give to God? Yes? Okay, you don't want to know, I'm not going to tell you nothing. Would you like to know, yes or no? Use your hands so others can come to Christ. Use your hands. How? We're going to need some of you ladies cook some, cook some food this year. We're going to need some of you young men to get out there and we're going to wash the cars of the neighbors. Yeah, we need some money. Oh, no, we're not going to do it for money. We're going to bless them. We're going to bless them. Are you crazy? After everything I do, we need to present our bodies as a living sacrifice. Amen? Okay, somebody better give a hand up to God right now. Now, the second thing we're going to get, we're going to get five things today. The second thing is, do not, look at what it says. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Oh, we have heard that verse so many times. But it talks about 
When we talk about serving God, you must renew the way you think. In other words, now that you want to be in the will of God, you got to change the way you think. Turn to the person next to you and say, you got to change the way you think. No, say it loud, say it loud. You got to change the way you think. Listen, it's about thinking in the right way. Why it says that now that we're talking about serving people. Oh, serving people. You see, I wasn't born as a little Christian baby. I live in this world before I was becoming a Christian man. What's the mentality in this world? Everybody is six to make me better. And I'm going to do whatever I got to do so others can help me. Is not that the mentality of the world? Okay, some of you guys need to wake up a little. Yes or no? That is the mentality of the world. You do whatever you got to do so others end up serving you. But that's not in Christ. Jesus came to serve, not to be served. That's why we have to change our mentality. Why serving my neighbor? You know? He, he, no! We're going to get to that point. And then look at what it says, the word of God. Then you will be able to test and approve what God wills, what God's will is. His good, pleasant, and perfect will. Then anybody wants to live under the perfect will of God? Three people in this place and, and some staff in the back. How many want to live in the perfect will of God? I don't know why you want to live in the perfect will of God. Well, it has to do with changing the way we think. It has to do with presenting our body so others. Do you want to know what was the quote that one lady that impact many nations called Mother Teresa was? Others. She said what? Others. It's about others. It's about serving other people. You see, many people feel frustrated nowadays because they feel that they cannot get a hold. They cannot get a hold of the will of God. But you see, you must change the way you think. If not, you will never get it. I'm sorry you will never get it. It took me years to understand because even as me becoming Christian, loving God, I brought the mentality of the world as I was living now in Christianity. How many believe that we bring those bad customs with us? Oh, come on. You remember the people from Israel as they walked out, out of Egypt. What? They got all Egypt in them. And God wanted to give them a better place. But God was saying, I need to remove the Egypt ways in order to give you something better. I don't know about you, but I want everything that God has for me. Amen? Come on, you better give a hand to God, but you got to let go. The ways of Egypt, the ways of the world that are holding you back. What's the first one? You don't exist to be served, man. You exist to serve others. Come on, Pastor Tony, don't talk about that. Now my wife is not going to pass me the control remote when he's next to me. It's deeper than that. All right? Verse 14, let's continue. For just as each of us has one body with many members... And these members do not all have the same function. So in Christ, we the many form one body. Number three, we all form what? What? One body. And each member belongs to all the others. So the third thing I need to teach you is we are one body and we belong to each other. Now turn to the person next to you and say, we belong to each other. Okay, somebody went, I don't belong to you. And I don't even know you, lady. Get out of the way, all right? But the see, that's exactly what it is. But we are a body of Christ and we belong to each other. We must understand that we, are con that we must become connected if we want to function properly. We belong to each other. You see, we can never accomplish everything. Get this. We can never accomplish everything. That God has for this church, for your personal life, unless you become connected. Well, I work in this area. It doesn't matter. You're part of the body of Christ. Well, I got my own way to see life. That's okay. The hand is not like the feet. Am I right? 
Hey, God bless. But you know what? I got pain in my leg right now. Right here. This portion of the body. I got pain. So what, what are I supposed to do? If I got pain. No. If you got pain in this portion of the body, what do you do? How, what do you do? Duh. You use the other part of the body. You reach and then you bring comfort. But imagine if the legs are mad with the hands. Right? And the hands like, no, I'm not going to help them. Why? Because I don't like them. They're not Puerto Rican like me. How many know what I'm talking about? Right? But, 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 no, I'm not going to do it. And the legs, no, I'm frustrated today. And the hands, I need to get that. And the legs, no, we're not working today. That's not my vision. So I'm not going over there. I guess we got to work together, right? I guess we got to work together, right? If we want to accomplish everything that God has for us, we better understand that we are a body of Christ. You better give a hand up to God, my friends. We're a body of Christ. You want to accomplish everything you want in your area? You need us. But, sorry, you need us. You're never going to accomplish everything you can accomplish without us. And I can never accomplish everything I can accomplish without you. So I better get a new way of thinking this year. There is people that need to be rescued out there. And unless we work together, it's not going to happen. Huh? Am I right? We got to work together. We're a body of Christ. We got to come together. Number four. We have different gifts. Thank God. Say thank God. We don't need two Tonys. It's enough with one Tony. Imagine two Tonys. Ah! Right? We have different gifts. According to the grace given to each of us. If your gifts. I, I love Paul. He knew how to convince the people. Always. There was people always very highly educated and complicated when Paul was talking to the people. Oh. So look at what it says. Paul says, knowing that we have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. If your gift is prophecy, then prophesy. Huh? I love that. Look at what it says then right after that, okay? If it is serving, then serve. If it is teaching, then teach. If it is to encourage, then in give encouragement. If it is giving, then give generously. If it is to lead, do it dilig diligently. If it is to show mercy, do it cheerfully. Wow, what a list. But I love here. It says that we all have different gifts. Your gift is different than mine. And some people, I love, the, I love the way Paul talked to these people. He says, all right, let's start with the complicated ones, okay? He says, if you have the gift of prophecy, prophesy. So, we all want to have the gift of prophecy. Because somehow we think that that makes us a little, Ugh. And the truth is, according to the word of God, we should all prophesy. You hear me what I'm saying? We all should be prophesy out there. We should all prophesy. And if we do it in the church, we must do it in order. Amen? And we will test what comes from God and what comes from your emotions. But at one point, you're going to learn to really prophesy. And that's good. But the truth is, not everybody's going to have the gift of prophecy. But for those that you can prophesy. Yeah, use your gift. And then I love Paul. He went for the fancy ones, and then right away. I love it. And those that want to serve, serve. It doesn't get more easy than that, man. The ones that prophesy and the ones that we pick up the chairs. I'm going to pick up the chairs. That's simple. Are you getting what I'm trying to say? We complicate. Come on, you better give a hand clap to God. We complicate the whole thing. We complicate the whole thing. But Paul is like, okay, you want to hear fancy stuff? I give you fancy stuff. You want to prophesy? Be a prophet. Okay, but you want to serve? Down here. Down here. Meet me right here. Let's serve. How do we serve? Hey, let's use our body. Let's move some chairs. Chairs? 
No. Okay, somebody have to move chairs so you can have a good time today. How many know what I'm talking about? And then we all prophesy. We can be here prophesy all day and we got no chairs to sit down. So how many of you say praise the Lord for the brother that has the spirit to serve? Okay, are you getting what I'm saying right now? See, not because somebody prophesies more than they want to serve. No. And then it says, I love it. And then I prophesy with faith. And serving, then serve. And then the teacher right away goes to the teacher. Teacher. The teacher. Teach. But and then he comes down. I love it right away. And for those that encourage, then give encouragement. Are you ready? How simple is to encourage people? Do you have to go to university to encourage people? No. I'm asking you. Do you have to take 10 classes in order to encourage people? No. Look to the person that says, you're looking good. Say it, you're looking good. You already encouraged somebody. Tell me. Man, I'm feeling better, bro. Say it again, say it again, say it again. Oh, man. I'm starting to feel pop right now. Not too much, because I'm going to go overhead, all right? But we can all encourage each other. That's simple. We can serve. We can encourage each other. Just one more time. Ah, I got him, man. We all can help each other. We all can use our gifts. It's not going to be the same. But if we don't start using them like tonight, somebody's going to listen at 5 o'clock. We're going to need the people that prophesy. Why? We're going to need the ones that come in the, before at 5 o'clock. We're going to pray. Oh, God, we believe today they're going to speak by faith. As we give, you know, some flyers and some ships, we're going to do a lot of fun stuff. The people is going to be receiving the word of God. How many believe we need the people that prophesy? But we're going to leave the ladies also. They know how to use their hands. And they're going to put the ships. And they're going to, you know, use the whole thing. And they're going to get it ready. Because we can stay all day prophesying. We got another practical thing. We're not going to have it. And then we're going to have also the encouragement people. What? The ones that are going to grab the stuff. They're going to go, oh yeah. Oh yeah. You want some of this? And the, see, we all work together. Because sometimes the people that prophesy, they can prophesy. But they don't use their hands. And that's fine. We need them both. We need them both. I always, listen, I don't call myself a prophet, but I'm always using the gift of prophet. Prophecy. How do you do it? See, the key is not to do it in the house. See, I, I, it's easy now when I got all of you Christians that believe in God. It's easy to prophesy over here because if I say, you're going to be blessed in the name of Jesus, how many of you say, amen? amen. I already prophesied over your life. The difficult part is I not only become a blessing inside the church, but outside the church. Did you do it, Pastor? Did you do it, Pastor? Yes, I do. How do you do that? Well, simple way. I'm going to a store to buy something. And it's a huge line of people in front of me. I got two choices. Get cranky or to start to prophesy in the name of Jesus. What do you do, Pastor? Oh, I start to prophesy. I start in the back. I believe in the name of Jesus that this line is going to move really fast. And I start to say to the people in the front, I believe in the lady that is doing the whole thing. Because you know what? She has a nasty attitude. I mean, you know what I'm talking about sometimes in New York. You know, she's serving that, you know, the, the, she's the cashier lady. Going, and I see her from far away and I say, man, you're doing a great job and you're going to make this so fast because you're a talented woman. In the name of Jesus, I bless you. And the lady goes like, yeah, me? No, but I'm going to move faster because you should just give me some, you just say something. Like, and I say, and you, you're going to be a blessing to all of us, lady. And believe it or not, the lady that had a cranky attitude, guess what happened? Guess what happened? I speak by faith over her life. And right away, the lady starts to serve everybody. And the line starts to move faster. And then what? Guess what? I was prophesying right there. As simple as being an encouragement to somebody. You don't have to use the word prophesy. I'm out there. And then somebody's having a bad day. And you know what? Everybody's been nasty with that lady. How many know what I'm talking about? And then you're the next person. And she's already like, and now you what? And I say, I'm just here to say, you're doing a great job, lady. Like when I'm traveling the airplanes, you know how crazy it is when they change one plane to other people. I don't know what I'm talking about. 
and everybody like, I need my ticket. I need you help me to go to the different place. A little chihuahua was all over the place over there, man. And I show up to the place, and the moment I show up to the place, I told him, of course, my flesh, everything in me wants to be like everybody else. But I have to change the way I think. I have to change the way I approach life. I have to let go of the old pattern. And now when I get there, in front of the lady, say, you're having a rough, life, a rough job right now going on. Yeah, yeah, you don't understand. No, no, I do. You know what? Hey, do whatever you can. I know you're doing everything you can in your power to help us. I bless you, man. How long have you been here? Oh, all day. Oh, you know what? You need to go home. Oh, it's not going to happen fast. Hey, don't worry. It'll take your time. I bless you. Can I get you some water? No, no, I'm okay. And then at the end, you move me to a better seat? Yeah. Don't tell nobody. You're just a nice man. And I go, ching, ching. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. It's a gift of encouragement. Are you with me? Simple like that. We got to use the gifts. We got to use the gifts. We are different people. Not only out there, but especially here too. Amen? We got to serve each other. And then let's continue with verse 9. Love in action. In other words, this love that we preach, we must show it through our actions. Look at the way it says, verse 9. Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil. Man, the list I'm going to give you right here, I can spend hours right here. I'm just going to go fast. Love, how it says that our love is supposed to be? Love must be what? Sincere. Yes or no? So what that tells me? That some people love with a not sincere heart. Did I got you and I got you? Yes, I got you now. Look at what it says. Hate what is evil. Cling what is good. Be devoted to one another in love. Honor one another above yourselves. Never be lacking in seal. And number five, and the most important of the day. But keep your spiritual fervor. Serving the Lord. Keep. You must keep. And in other words. I like that. He says we must serve with passion. And not lose our spiritual fervor. You must serve God with passion. You must serve God with everything. If we're going to do. Listen. If we're going to impact this society. We got to do it with a passion. In us. I hear always. From our founder. If nobody knows your passion. It's because you probably don't have one. If nobody knows your passion. It's because probably nobody has one. And you say. I don't know what is my future. But you know that you can serve people. You know that you can serve people. So serve people with passion. God is saying. And Paul is saying to everybody. If you are a prophet. If you are an encouragement to other people. Whatever you do. Do it with passion. Do it. Listen, with fervor. Because people is looking at you. People is always looking at you. Let's stop right here. It says that we must keep our passion in serving God. And by serving others, we serve God. Anybody wants to serve God? Anybody wants to serve God? You know what that means? Look at me. You're saying, God, help me to serve others. I'm going to say it again. How many want to serve God? You got to serve others. It can be done in another way. What Paul is saying here is that we must never lose our passion in serving God. Why do you think Paul was saying that to the people from Rome? Because the people from Rome was making the same mistake that you and I. What was the mistake? They constantly were losing their seal and their passion in serving God. Can that be lost for a moment? Can that be lost for a season? Yes, of course. That's why we have to focus again. And we got to remember that this year, if we're going to make a difference, we got to work together. We got to work together. We need each other. Apart from whatever area or passion you have. Well, my passion is in you. You need everybody. 
Well, my passion is the children. You need everybody. Well, my passion is the adults. You need everybody. We need each other. We cannot do it in our own. Amen? And we must serve with passion. My friend, there are many promises in the word of God. Anybody wants the promises from God? There are many. Or two people at the end. Nobody raised their hand. That anybody wants the promises from God. There are many promises in the word of God. That when you serve. This will happen. Would you like to know one? Would you like to know one? I'm going to tell you one. Deuteronomy. Right in the beginning. God was teaching his people. How to live the proper Christian life. Deuteronomy 11, 13 and 15. So. If you faithfully obey the commands I am giving you today to love the Lord your God and serve Him with all your heart and with all your soul. Stop. You hear what it says there? That we must serve God with what? With all of what? Okay, say it loud. With all of what? Hearts. And with all our soul. What that means? You got to leave everything in the line. Have you ever worked so hard doing something that is important for you that you are very tired physically doing it? Yes? I remember when I arrived here 20 years ago. Not many of you will remember because you, you were not here. But one of my jobs was to be in charge of all the bosses. I was the boss ministry director here. And in those days, we owned 60 buses. Just so you know. Only five run very well. <laughs> the other 55 were broken down in pieces. And part of my job was to, with the whole team, line up the buses, get the drivers, uh, even some of the higher drivers, but part of the main job was to get these buses early in the morning. And you will see Pastor Bill himself. I tell him all the time, go to bed. I say, huh, are you crazy? This is what I got to do right now. Get out of the way. Okay, okay, but I'm sorry, Pastor, right? And he was cleaning the buses over there. Five o'clock in the morning. How many guys remember? I mean, some of you were here with us cleaning the buses. It was something funny, man. Kids left candy. And the captains would not clean the buses. And, and it was Sunday, and we were trying to clean the buses, open the doors, and big rats, man, jump out of the buses. And I remember when I saw the rat, I went like, ah! <laughs> Big Marshall Tony, right? What's up? Ah! I went like that, right? Like a little girl. <laughs> so, but we were cleaning the buses, Saturdays, 5 a.m., Sundays. And I remember a Saturday. It was a long time. You maybe don't remember, but I do remember. It was a sun Saturday that we did six sessions. And then in Sunday, Cherry, remember, ten sessions. The famous camel. You remember that, Cherry? You, you have flashbacks from the past? It was 16 services on the weekend. I remember the last service. And I have to preach between. It was not only me in the corner, but run to the inside and preach. And I remember going to my house in the third floor. And I couldn't move my legs. I was tired physically. And I started to cry. Like a little girl. <laughs> and I feel sorry for myself for a moment. And I said, I was already a pastor before I came here to do this. I'm really tired, Lord. And I was crying, having a moment as I go up there to my house. And I hear clear the word of God. And he said, you have served me well today. Don't mess it up now with this attitude. We have to get involved. Amen. We got to serve God with passion. We got to give our very best. We got to go back to old school. Call it if you want it. Some people say, you're too old school. Well, I'm old school. Going to get busy. Things in life, they're not going to get done easy. 
But then, but then, look at what it says, the promise. If you love God with all your heart, if you serve Him, if you serve Him with all your heart, with all your soul, then I will send rain on your land and its season, both autumn and spring rains, so that you may gather in your grain new wine and olive oil. I will provide grass in the fields for your cattle, and you will eat and be satisfied in the name of Jesus. That anybody wants the rain of blessings in your life, anybody wants the rain of blessings in your life, don't hold back. It's all up to us. By serving God hard. Well, today, probably I'm going to finish home. And I'm going to be tired. I know the people that serve with me. They finish at the end of the day tired. But you know what? At the end of the day, we can say, God, we leave it all in the line. And now, we wait for at the right time. We will receive the rain of blessings. Because we did our part. You definitely, God, going to do your part. How many of you want the blessings? The rain of blessings. What, what are the rains of blessings? You know, prosperity. <sighs> Healing. Prosperity, healing, uh, health in your family, peace in your homes. Suddenly, the, the, the son that is a troublemaker is now walking in obedience. And you're like, what? How did that happen? It was not you. It was you serving God with all your heart and all your passion. And then God taking care of what you cannot take care So here's my question. Did you want the rain of blessings? Three people. You want the rain of blessings? If I would tell you today, go through that door. And as you go into that door and you pass to the next part, you will receive a tremendous blessing. How many of you will run through that door? How many of you will run through that door? Am I right? Yes or no? Hey, I just told you today the door for the blessings. Serve God with passion. Join me to serve God with passion this year. And we will see what no eye has seen and ear has not heard. But it's going to take all of us. You hear me? That's when somebody, little by little, maybe not me. Back it up, back it up, back it up, not me. No. All of us. All of us. We're going to serve hard. Amen. We're going to open connect groups. We're going to serve in the sites. We're going to serve in our indoor routes. We're going to serve with the youth. We're going to serve in every area so others can come to Christ. Amen? Don't justify yourself saying, well, I guess I work very hard. How many believe that every person in this place, I believe, they still can give more? Do you believe that, yes or no? Yes. If you are doing everything, you maximize, maximize every strength in you, serving God, to the limit, raise your hand. You are so wrong. You're not. You maybe not heard what I said. If you think you maximize every strength, serving God, and to this point, raise your hand. You better don't raise your hand. So I can find you right now something to do for God right now. Go and get me soda from the bodega, man. <laughs> we must work together. We must what? And who knows? By you helping me, maybe God used one of my assistants to reach your son or your daughter. They don't want to know nothing about God. Who knows? Who knows? By us today. Giving some flyers and making some noise. Your family member or a friend or your family member is going to pass by. Is going to get in touch with God. And God is going to use that friend to touch your family member. I said, let's work hard. Let's set things in motion. And let's give the results to God in the name of Jesus. Amen. Did you want the rain? Did you want the rain? Stand up on your feet right now. You want the rain of blessings. There is so much that I can talk to you about it. Oh, but I will talk to you later. Paul says later, give yourself as a living sacrifice. You must not conform to the ways of this world. You must allow the process of changing the way you think. In other words, you must change the way you see the things. Then you will understand that we all are in one body of Christ. In other words, whatever you do, good or bad, listen, listen, 
will end up affect, affecting all of us. We are one body, my friends. Different gifts. And yet we have different gifts. But the reason is so we can edify each other. But he says we must serve him with passion and not lose our spiritual fervor. If you have lost your spiritual fervor in serving God, be honest and start to say, God, forgive me. Forgive me, God. Father, this is our prayer. Father, forgive us. Pray with me. God, forgive us. That we have lost sometimes our fervor in serving you, God. We get comfortable, God. But today, God, we say, here we are. We place ourselves one more time as a living sacrifice, God. We said, use our body, use our gifts so others can come to you. Pray with me and say, God, I place myself in your hands this year so you 